Tyrannosaurus rex is the most famous dinosaur, and easily the largest theropod in its environment. But it may not have been the only tyrant lizard in Lake Cretaceous North America. This all started in 1983, when an incomplete Tyrannosaurus jaw was discovered on the bank of a New Mexico reservoir by a heroic yachtsman in the Hall Lake Formation. Paleontologist David Gillette recognized the specimen as belonging to a gigantic Tyrannosaur and described it along with other fragmentary material in 1986. The material consisted of a left dentary, which was mostly complete, a chevron, an incomplete articular, a right prearticular, and assorted teeth. That's not a lot, but given the distinctive proportions, size, and morphology, Gillette's team assigned it to Tyrannosaurus rex. Fast forward to 2023. Sebastian Dalman and a group of other very high-profile paleontologists publish an abstract at the annual Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting on October 20th. Let's read it together. Now, this is just an abstract. There weren't any diagnostic characters mentioned, so we can't evaluate their phylogenetic analysis. But it's certainly an interesting thought. Six to seven million years is a long time gap, and I wouldn't be surprised if this did turn out to be a new species. I personally am skeptical of splitting Tyrannosaurus rex given the infamous 2022 study that tried to turn it into three species based on dubious characteristics, but let's play with hypotheticals for a moment. Since it was discovered by a yachtsman, we'll call this specimen Jack Tar, a solid nautical name. According to the abstract, Jack Tar lived right on the line between the Campanian and the Maastrichtian, sighted as 6 to 7 million years before T. rex. The studies I found about the Hall Lake Formation indicated that Jack Tar would have lived with a Triceratops Sciaceratopsian, some Ankylosaurs, possibly another Tyrannosaurid, and a Titanosaur that was probably Alamosaurus. There's at least a gigantic 1.68 meter femur with titanosaurian proportions from the area, and Lazinski et al. 1984 tentatively referred to it as Alamosaurus. That would indicate that the southern population of Tyrannosaurus coexisted with gigantic sauropods, in contrast to its northern relatives. Whether the southern group had any adaptations for hunting those sauropods is a question that would require significantly more data to answer, but I wouldn't rule it out. Perhaps the Tyrannosaurians first grew large to take on sauropod prey, and then moved north to specialize in armored opponents. If Jack Tar really is a new species, tentatively referred to as Tyrannosaurus macrensis online, it would represent by far the biggest non-rex tyrannosaur. The dentary measures 89.5 cm long while incomplete, compared to Stan's complete 91 cm. Both Jack Tar and Stan have dentaries preserved with 13 alveoli, indicating that their proportions are nearly identical, and the difference in measurements is tiny enough that they're likely the same size. Dentary scaling is a little suspect, since skull proportions can vary so wildly between individuals, but based on the measurements we have, Jack Tar was likely around 8 tons. That's bigger than most megatheropods. I remain skeptical for now. Once a full paper is released, we'll be able to analyze it in detail to see if it's another Regina Imperator Civil War, or if there truly is a gigantic Tyrannosaur that rivals T-Rex itself in size. Subscribe to stay updated on the Tyrannosaur family drama. I'll be covering it all right here on Vividin, Paleontology Evolved. Do you believe that Tyrannosaurus macrensis will turn out to be a valid species? Comment with your thoughts and subscribe to stay on top of paleontology news. Join the channel for loyalty badges, emojis, early video access, and shoutouts. Joining the Megasauropod level gets you a species profile video of your choice when you sign up, and another one for each year you're part of the level. I'm the Vividin, and I'll see you next time.